Hi, many of you may recognize my face. I started Smoky Mountain Knife Works 40 years ago, selling knives out of, my, out of the really the seat of my car in a, in a shoe box. But long story short is I've sold millions and millions of knives and hopefully made millions and millions of people happy with our products. What, what I saw today, I just felt really impelled to tell all our customers Please, please let this be a lesson on all the great treasures you buy from us and you keep for your collection. Be careful how you store them. Be careful how they're passed on because this was a collection. This was one of our customers. I see many old memories and many of my designs in here and things that our staff worked hard at the Knife Works to bring you. And it comes back looking like this from improper storage and improper care. I mean, the, the boxes are terrible. I mean, look at, look at this, the wrappers were that. There's, you know, I mean, it's, please, you've got to take care for your knives. I mean, knives, knives, they need love and care. I mean, look at this knife. I, I can't even tell, I think it was an old uh, kinfolks knife. And this knife would have been worth you know, a hundred dollars now in its condition. It, it may clean up and it may bring something, it may not. I mean, here, look at this knife and the condition of it. They stored a plastic handle knife in there and and look, I mean, it's it, it just barely comes out, but look at the condition of the sheath. I mean, please, please customers, if you love our knives like I do and our staff does take care. I mean, look at this. It just blows my mind to see all these. Look at this. This was a Kyber knife. This was an antique knife. It's probably a hundred years old. And it was, you know, it was, could have been in good condition, but now the blade is all pitted. I mean, the sheath is just, look at the mold on it. I'm almost afraid. Actually, when we were unpacking this, we were like, oh God, should we go get gas masks? I mean, here's a, here's a hammer forged knife made in Soligen, Germany, an African buoy. I mean, this was, a, this was a fantastic knife, a fantastic antique knife. And now look at it. I mean, it's rusted. You cannot not store knives like this. They need care. And if you don't care for them, then you need to, to sell them to us or or somebody but I mean and here was one of the very first John and I were talking about this because John's filming this but John's also worked for me what 32 33 years now so anyway this was the actual the first tie black tie coated knife that we ever did uh, when I was president of the United Cutlery with Gil Hibbon and it was it, it would be great but now it's it's the collector value is really diminished because it was stored inside the box with the leather sheath and it laid against the leather sheath for probably 30 years. Look at this. I mean, you know, dust and dirt. I mean, it's just, please guys, the blades are rusted. I mean, we all love knives and we all look like collecting, but when they need care and they need proper attention. I mean, Here's a, you know, this, here's an egg knife that was carried in, in World War I. But now it's, you know, it's still got some cosmoline on it, but it's, it's, you know, it's just awful. And a sword, look at this great sword. You know, that would have been a fabulous addition to somebody's collection, but not now. Can you imagine what we're gonna, it's gonna cost more to clean this than it'll bring. And it goes on and on. This customer was bought product during the golden era of our bayonet boom. I remember almost all these bayonets. We we found a company that had had always bought and sold guns, and they never did know what to do with the bayonets because they weren't in the knife business; they were in the gun business. Well, we were in the knife business, and we bought literally tractor trailers full of bayonets. We can't get them now. I wish we could. But this man could have had some beautiful, fantastic things that he bought at, at the price. But I just pulled this out. Look at this. You cannot store an antique bayonet like this. This would have been worth $100. He probably paid Smoky Mountain Knife Works $9.99 for it. But now, you know, and, and I remember these. 
when I bought these, I was just these are these are like I think 1908 or something like that. And and I've always wished I could have bought these again. I only bought them one time, but now, you know. And he was smart. This guy was smart. He bought two, four. He bought five of them, which was phenomenal. But now, look at this. I mean, you cannot. I keep keep saying it over and over again, but you have to care for these antique treasures. So anyway, I just felt like empowered to tell you people that have supported us all these years, please, when you buy these things, they're like your children. You have to raise them, you have to care for them, you have to tend them, and you have to look after them so that the next generation can pass them on. I mean, it goes, well, here's the end of it, but just please, I hope this video will help some of you to care for your for your collections as much as we care for you, our customers. How would you care for them? You've got to keep them dry. You've got to keep them some oil. Never, ever, ever take a knife and do like this and then put it up because you have oil on your hands and that oil is gonna, gonna remain on that. And if I come back in five years without wiping this off, properly, there'll be rust right there. Another major thing too is celluloid knives. Here's two celluloid knives that are beginning to decompose. It's just, they're just now in the stages, but see the rust on the back spring? That rust is going to spread over into the celluloid plastic handle, and then that celluloid will decompose. You know, celluloid knives were real popular 30 years ago in Germany. These are both German-made knives for Smoky Mountain Knife Works before we we had on our own house brands. I mean, the old Smoky is on the on the the blade edge of this, and this is one of the very first knives I ever bought in Germany, probably 38 years ago on my first trip there. But just with celluloid knives, you got to totally keep them dry. You need to keep them separated from each other in a knife pack. We sell knife packs or knife rolls, but the main thing is keep them dry. And when you handle them, you know, we also sell a product called Miracle Cloths or we sell white things. So just remember, keep your stuff dry, keep it separated, and look at it every now and then just to make sure it's, it's safe. But never ever let it get exposed to moisture and always wipe it down and put it up just like a gun. You know, anybody that collects knives usually collects guns and you don't handle your gun or go shoot it and not clean it before you put it up. And that's what you've got to do with, with our product and your product. Thank you.